Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to the free webinar on 20 tips on how to make your move abroad faster, cheaper, and less stressful. You might be wondering, is this for me? Well, it is for you if you have thought of moving abroad, if you are in the process of moving abroad, or if you have moved and you find it tough, either from a financial or logistical or emotional perspective. You might also be wondering, who am I? Well, it's nice to meet you. My name is Diana, and I'm going to share a few fun facts about myself. So first of all, I am married to George, and he is the first boy I ever liked in my life. So yes, we are childhood friends. This is Rasta my cat, who is famous on Instagram. And last but not least, I wanted to share with you that I teach yoga and I'm also a relationship coach. I moved from Romania, from Bucharest, Romania, my hometown to Vancouver, Canada in 2013 to live with my husband, George, who, although he is Romanian, he moved with his parents many, many years ago. This move has been the toughest experience of my life. I had a tough time getting used to the new culture. I found it very hard to be far away from uh, my social, from my support network. And I also found it very hard to start everything from scratch. So this whole process for me has taken a long time and it has been very intense from very many perspectives. And this is why I created a program that I called Smoothster for your smooth move to another country because I wanted to create a platform of support for people who are going through the process of moving and to make it faster, cheaper, and a lot easier for them than it was for me. In order to support you on this journey from the moment that you make a decision to move abroad until you really feel integrated in the new country, I also created three do-it-yourself manuals. I call them the three master guides. The first master guide is called The Essentials and contains all the things that you absolutely need for the move, things that everyone thinks about that are obvious and that a move cannot happen without. The second master guide I called the important but hidden. And it contains the things that are not as obvious, but that affect the quality of your everyday life. And we're going to talk about these things a little bit later as well. And the last but not least, the, this manual I called the mental and the emotional, and this is the closest to my heart. These are the things that most of us don't think of when we're moving abroad. And this is why we have a tough time when we're doing this. You're, you're going to get a lot more details in the following on these three manuals. Now, how should you use this presentation? Well, these are your instructions. These two eyes show that I'm going to share a real life story of people who moved abroad and have something to share that you can learn out of. This magnifying glass suggests that I'm going to share an online resource, something that I looked into, I find valuable, up to date, and is also, and also contains country specific information. This sign here means that I'm going to suggest an action item for you. The reason why I included action items is because I find that we learn best when we do things. And in order for you to feel prepared when we finish this webinar is to actually start doing these action items one by one. And last but not least, this funny owl shares one of the um, resources that I've created in the Smoothster program with you. It can either be a chapter from the master guides, it can be a free resource that you can find online on our website, or it's, it can also be a free video tutorial that um, I've uploaded on our YouTube channel. So let's go into the 20 tips that I've promised at the beginning of this webinar. Tip number one, decide on your why. 
So I'm asking you, why are you moving anyway? What is your reason? Would you like to get rid of something? Would you do it because everyone else does or someone close to you did it? Are you moving because you want to change something in your life? Is it because you want to go to a country that has a better political system, a better health system? Or are you escaping a relationship in your life? What is your why of moving? But while you think about that, I would like to draw your attention about a few aspects. First, are you moving away from something or towards something? A lot of the times in our life, we tend to know what we don't want. But it is hard for us to express what we want. So I would like to invite you, when you think about your why, think more of the things that you want. Think more of the things that you're moving towards, not the things that you want to move away from. Secondly, I would like you to ask yourself, what is your gut feeling when you think of moving abroad? Is your breath shallow or deep? Is your body tight or relaxed? When you think about moving abroad, what is your body's reaction to it? This is a very important indicator if this is a good decision for you. And last but not least, what is the vision of yourself in the future? So if you close your eyes and you visualize yourself in the new country, in the country you want to move to, what do you see? I have a very, very beautiful story of one of the participants in one of my early webinars. And he said that when he closes his eyes, what he sees is himself and his young son on the bicycles riding on the streets of Amsterdam. And this image has fueled his way and his process and now they are in um, they are in the Netherlands and they're having a great time. So I'd like to invite you to write down three reasons of why you are moving abroad, but taking into consideration these three aspects that I mentioned. You need to formulate it in a positive way of the things that you're moving towards. What is your gut feeling when you mention those reasons? And what is the vision of yourself? In the third master guide that I mentioned before, the mental and the emotional, we have a chapter dedicated to this called Knowing Your Why. Tip number two, decide on your three must-haves. Now, what does that mean? It means that whenever you make a decision, and it's not only for where to move to, but it can also be for a place you are for um, a person you want to go into uh, to start a relationship with or maybe when you look for a job what are your three must-haves what are those three things three criteria that you will not compromise on when you make the decision for example Maybe when you think of the country you want to move to or the city you want to move to, you will take into consideration the distance from your home country. Maybe you want that country to be, for it not to be um, farther than two hours by plane than where you come from. Or maybe you are looking for great job opportunities. So your must have criteria is that you get a job there. Or maybe another criteria of you is that you have good schools for your kids or good university for your kids or for yourself. Maybe you will choose a country that allows you to keep your current citizenship. That can also be an important factor for you. Maybe 
you're very interested in a beautiful landscape. Maybe you want to see the mountains and the ocean when you look out the window. Or maybe something that is very important and close to your heart is to have family, family or friends in the area. There are no right or wrong criteria. It's just what is important to you. And it is important to know what are those three most important things for you. Why is it important? Especially if you haven't yet decided where you want to move to, or if you've decided or you're thinking about a place but you're not sure, it is important to know what are your criteria. Because then it is a lot easier to make a decision. When you know these important things, then it, it is a lot easier to simply say this thing or this place does not work for me because it doesn't meet these criteria. And parentheses here, this is very, very helpful also in a relationship. So for all the single people out there, write down your three must-haves for your future partner. I'd like to give you a good example of my friend, Laura from Ireland. I asked Laura why she, um, why she chose to come to, to come to Vancouver. And I said, why, what were your three must haves for the place you wanted to move to? And she said, my first must have was, you had to be English speaking, fair enough. My second must have was that I wanted it to be to have good weather, meaning not extremely high or extremely low temperatures. Fair enough. And last but not least, Laura wanted to go to, to move to a country where she could take her dog Pixie with her, who is one of the most scared dogs in the world, without needing to, to do any tests on her. And as you see, Vancouver, Canada, satisfied all these three must-haves. So I'd like to invite you to write down your three must-haves for the new place you're moving to. In our first Master Guides, Moving Abroad the Essentials, we have a chapter called Define Your Must-Haves and Nice-to-Haves of Your Ideal Location, where we go more into detail on this. Tip number three, choose your location intentionally at country, city, as well as neighborhood level. This is something that usually surprises people. So we all agree that, country, that countries are very different among each other. That's true. But we can also agree that cities are very different. Munich, Germany, from Cologne, Germany, they are fairly different, although they're in the same country. Vancouver, Canada is very different from Toronto, and I'm not the only one saying that. But people often miss to look closer at the neighborhood they're moving into. Especially in bigger cities, neighborhoods have evolved to be very, very different. You can have a neighborhood that is very expensive. You can have a neighborhood where there's a lot of young families with young children. You can have a neighborhood that has predominantly a specific type of population. Maybe you have the neighborhood called Chinatown or Little Italy. So it's important to know where you're moving to and what neighborhood, because this will affect your everyday life. There's a kind of funny story of Mira and Stefan who moved from Eastern Europe to a city in North America. And they chose a neighborhood without knowing where the population was predominantly Indian. And when they arrived, they were very, very surprised and imagine that this neighborhood would have been a very, very welcoming and very, very fit for people with Indian background or people from India. But for me and Stefan, it was very, very hard even to read the labels from the stores or to go shopping. So it's very important to do your research in advance and to make sure that when you move to a certain neighborhood that it does fit your 
preferences. There is a beautiful website called teleport.org and it allows you to compare cities on quality of life, cost of living, salary, education, and a lot more things. So depending on what criteria you've chosen for each of the country, city, and neighborhood, those three must-haves for the country, the three must-haves for the city, and three must-haves for the neighborhood, you'll also be able to compare the cities by going to teleport.org. In our first master guide, The Essentials, we have a chapter on researching all the important criteria when you choose the location. Tip number four, cost of living versus expected income. The ratio of the cost of living in your expected income defines the quality of your life. Even if you're going to earn more in the country you're moving to, potentially, it might also imply that you will need to pay more on a rent, that you will need to pay more on food and on other services. So don't be fooled by the fact that you're going to earn more. You also need to know what the cost of living is in this, that particular place where you are moving to. So instead of looking at the number, at your app, the absolute amount of your income, you need to look at the buying power of your income. And how do you do this? Well, there are a lot of websites who tell you about the cost of living in a certain place in the world. You can also check the prices online to see how much a rent is in a certain area that you want to move to, how much the um, food costs and so on, how much the traveling is and how much other services are. And also to do um, brief research on what your potential income could be in the industry you want to work in. It is very important to do that beforehand. So I would like to suggest that you calculate what percentage of the cost of living is in your expect, what the cost of living is in your expected income. Will you have room for savings? A great website is also this one that I mentioned here and allows you to compare the cost of living between two cities. In our Master Guide, The Essentials, we have a whole chapter dedicated to the cost of living estimation. Tip number five, have a starting budget for three to six months. At Smooster, we separate the moving budget from the starting budget. The moving budget is the budget that you need in order to prepare for the move and to actually move. While the starting budget are all the first, the, the one time expenses after your move, and then those three to four months, three to six months worth of expenses. How do you calculate it? Well, you can track your expenses for one or two months right now in your current context and see what your cost items are. How much do you spend on your car maintenance, on your insurance? How much you spend going out? How much you spend on clothes or on traveling? And once you do this, you can then translate those costs in for the country or the place that you are moving to. You'll be able to find all the prices online. So, would you care to roughly estimate your starting budget? That would be great. There are great expense tra tracking apps you might use. We might be already using one of them, Mint, Spendy, Wellbe, and so many more. So you can start doing that. This is actually great no matter if you want to move to or not to keep track of your expenses to see how much money goes where. Again, in the essentials, in our first master guide, we have a chapter that goes into detail on all the potential cost items. It's called budget items after the move. Tip number six, to demystify your job and income. Yes, one cannot 
survive without an income. But at the same time, we underestimate the, the amount of options that we have in order to get to the income that we want, in order to get to that quality of the life that we want. We have very many options. We just need to be creative. For example, of course, you can apply for a new job. Or maybe you want to keep your current job and work remotely, if that's an option. Or maybe you want to think of moving within the same company that you are in right now, but to another branch and then to another city, to another country. Another thing that you could do here is to move to another organization who you know has international offices to maximize your chances of moving abroad. That is also an option. You can also start your own business. And maybe some of you, maybe most of you will say, oh, I am not entrepreneur material. Fair enough. I'm not saying that everyone should have their own business, but I'm sure that you have a passion. I'm sure that you have something that if you would have all the money in the world, you would like to do. Maybe it could be a good idea to start your own business on the side. Start small. Start it out of passion without any financial pressure and see where that goes. It might be that at some point, this, own, this business of yours can turn into a source of income. So think about it. You can sell or rent your properties if you have any. That is also an option of get, getting an income or putting your budget together. You can decide to move to another country, at least temporarily, when you are on mat leave, when you are on mat leave, or when your partner is on mat leave. Why is that a good idea? Well, because you receive the mat leave money. You don't need to go to or your partner doesn't need your partner doesn't need to go to work. So there is this break, this period of time where you have the option of testing out other places in this world. Or you can ask for a sabbatical. I was lucky enough to have a boss who granted me a, sabbat a sabbatical for five months. So even if this is not available everywhere and within every organization, it might be something that you want to, um, to explore. The, the great advantage is that at the end of your trial of moving to another country, you, if it doesn't work, then you have a job to come back to. And of course, you can apply for a grant or a scholarship if you want maybe to go back to university or if you want to, to change your, um, to change, to change the, um, the field that you're working in right now. After all, moving abroad is a new beginning. So I'd like to invite you to identify three income strategies that would work for you. So again, be creative and be open. Don't say, this is not for me, I can't do this. But rather, how could I do this? In our master guide, Moving Abroad the Essentials, we have a chapter called Define Your Sources of Income that gives you more guidance on this. Tip number seven, <clears throat> start your network before you move. Even if you are a people person or not a people person, your network is very important. Your network is a great source of information, support, and opportunities. This is so crucial. Through your network, you're able to get more job opportunities, you're able to obtain friends, you're able to find valuable information that could change your life to the better. Luckily, we have a lot of options nowadays to create our network. You can connect with people on LinkedIn, you can join Facebook groups on, on 
you can join groups on Facebook. You can go to organizations, um, organization websites where you can find jobs or where you can find volunteering opportunities and so on. You can go to recruiter websites and sign up there. There are very, very many options of how you can increase your network even before you move. <clears throat> My friend Lily had a very successful strategy and I really admire her for that. And this is something that I wanted to share with you. Before uh, Lily moved from her home country, before she moved abroad, she started connecting with people via LinkedIn. But she didn't connect with people randomly. She connected with people that came from the same country she comes from, that worked in the city that she wanted to move to, and that worked in the industry that she wanted to work into, that she wanted to work in. And the great thing about that is that not only did she find in that she found out inside information from that industry, and that she was able to find job through this a job through this approach, but she also gained friends. So one of some of the people from the ones that she contacted, she got to meet them, and she became friends with them. So it was two or three birds out of the from the same stone. I have created a few videos, actually four videos on how to find a job when moving abroad. So I'm going to send you the link to the YouTube channel and to those free video tutorials. They are short and sweet. I promise you'd like them. <laughs> Tip number eight, make paperwork a priority. Now, personally, when I hear about paperwork, I start feeling sick. Paperwork is usually something that is very tedious. There are a lot of things that don't depend on you, but this is why we need to make it a priority. So as soon as you've decided on a destination, the next step is your paperwork. I have two sub tips within this tip. So tip number one, or 8.1 would be to create a list of all the documents you need for the move with their status to be renewed, to be extended, to be replaced, to be applied for, to be translated. Remember that when it comes to dealing with authorities, it usually takes a longer time than expected, especially if you need to apply for a new, especially if you need to apply for a new document or if you need to extend it. So you need to start right away. Tip number two, 8.2, is to make both digital and hard copies of each of those documents. Ideally, you would, put, you would make two hard copies of each and leave one behind in your home country with a person you trust, and one you take with you along with the originals. So I'd like to invite you to make a list of all the documents you need and their status. To check out the government website of the places you're moving to, the, both the, the country websites and the, um, the city websites. And to um, maybe to have a look at chapter number two from Moving Abroad the Essentials Master Guide, the paperwork to be done perfectly. Tip number nine, be prepared for emergencies. Well, you might ask, what already emergency? What kind of emergency? I am young and restless and I'm on top of everything. Well, fair enough, but the definition of an emergency is that it comes up in an unexpected way and when you least when you're least prepared for it so what types of emergency am i talking about well all kinds of emergencies it can be a natural disaster okay it can be a medical emergency it can be a legal emergency maybe you need to go to your home country maybe you need to go to your home country unexpectedly this sometimes happens or maybe you lost a document and you need to replace it what do you do so there are a few strategies 
that um, I will suggest here. So first of all, set money aside. Just know that in case you need to go back to your home country on a short notice that you, you have the money for the, for the ticket, that if something happens that you are covered, carry an emergency card with you, have your go-to people, know what doctor to contact in case you need something, know what pharmacist to contact or what, where to go to a pharmacy, or just make sure that you know your people. Identify the most important facilities around you, especially where the main hospital is, and have emergency contacts. So identify the, the people that need to be called in case something happens to you. So the action item that I suggest here is to identify two potential emergency contacts, one in your home country and one in the country you're moving to. And if you do not know someone who's moving, if you don't know someone who's moving uh, in the place you're moving to, just consider that you might ask a neighbor to be your contact person or your colleague from work. Just have that in mind. In Moving Abroad, the Essentials, we have a chapter that goes into depth with, to, with this. It's called Be Prepared for Emergencies and Create an Emergency Plan. Tip number 10, become a pro at packing. Maybe you know this, maybe you don't but i can tell you for sure that packing is a tiring process it's a tedious process it has to do with a lot of details but it is also a great opportunity for you to get rid of the things that you know need to put order in everything that you have to start remembering the things that you didn't know that you owned and to start fresh so there are five options that what you can do with things uh, with, with your things. So first of all, for first option, of course, is to pack and to ship them. So basically to take them with you. The, the most important things, the things that you absolutely need. Number two is to store them. So in case you don't want to get rid of them and you think you might need them at some point or they are precious to you, you can decide to store them. You can store them in the basement of a friend, or you can pay for some storage space somewhere in order not to throw those things away. Number three, you can sell your things. The things that are newer, the things that can be sold, you can sell them, you can organize a garage sale if that's something that works in the part of the world that you are from. Number four, donate that's a very nice thing to do it helps a lot of people a lot of people in need so you can donate your stuff and last but not least you can throw away the things that you don't need the things that you think nobody will buy or nobody will be helped by them so make a list of all categories of items that you own for example one of the categories could be electronics another one can be furniture another one can be winter clothes and so on just so you slowly start gaining more insight of the things that you own we own so many things a lot more than we could possibly remember there is a very helpful first luggage checklist on our website. So you can go to mymoveguide.com slash free and you can download it from there right away. And also in our master guide, the essentials, we have a chapter called packing and shipping items from the home country. Tip number 11. I know this title sounds very funny. But know your precipitations. What does that mean? I hear some people saying, oh, I'm so weather sensitive, but also other people who say, oh, I'm not weather sensitive at all. Well, think again. The weather influences your everyday experience. The weather dress affects the way you dress, the way you affects your means of transportation, 
affects your mood a lot of the times and affect, affects your travel expenses. So don't you think that weather does influence you? It does affect every, the weather does affect your everyday life. So before you move somewhere, start thinking, how are the seasons like in that place? Are the winters very, very cold? Are the summers very, very hot? Do I have three or two seasons? What about the rain and the snow? What about the duration of the day and the night? How is the pressure, the humidity, and how are the winds? A good um, place to check this is World Weather, the World Weather website, but you can also look on um, your smartphone to see how the weather looks like in the city you want to move to. And we also have in our second master guide that I haven't mentioned before, the important but hidden, and chapter number four on loving the climate, weather, and landscape. Tip number 12, yum yum, knowing your food. So food means different things for different people. So without, with, irrespective of the fact that we need to eat in order to survive, Food also is connected to feelings, memories, to people. It can mean deep connection or deeper connection with a person. It is associated to events or it's associated to rituals. So food means different things in different parts of the world and for, for different people. It is important to know that the food will taste differently, even if you have the same recipes. The um, fruits and the vegetables taste differently. And just manage your expectations. Just know and be open to new possibilities in your diet because your diet will change. Some of the ingredients that you're used to, not only that they will have a different taste, but it might be that you won't be able to find them or that they will be very, very expensive and you will not be able to have them as often as you do in your home country. But then again, there are other ingredients, other fruits and vegetables, other options for you to enjoy. So be patient and enjoy. <laughs> I wanted to share something very that I, that I find very funny when it comes to when we organize parties. So before I came to Vancouver, I would just have, just choose the foods that I wanted to, to serve when I had people over. But when I came to Vancouver where people are very health conscious and very conscious of their food, I, I realized that I needed to create menus of different styles. <laughs> so I had to have, I, now when I have people abroad, uh, when I have people over, I make sure that I have at least one dish of each, one that is dairy-free, one that is gluten-free, one that is nut-free, one that is vegan, one that is sugar-free, <laughs> one that doesn't have beef and what doesn't have pork. So as you see, I am trying to satisfy a large variety of food preferences. And this is very, very interesting. This has been a learning curve for me and also a great way of educating my nutrition. And I love it. In our second master guide, The Important But Hidden, we have um, a chapter dedicated to did this, eating the, called Eating the Food. Tip number 13, know the language. I cannot tell you how important this is in my opinion. 
especially in, in the parts of the world where people don't speak English. In most of the countries, and especially the ones that are more popular destinations for um, people who move abroad, it is easier to, to get along um, without knowing the local language. But even trying the local language is a sign of respect and a conscious effort to integrate. And I highly, highly encourage it. This will make your life a lot easier. It will also help you understand the locals better and connect with them a lot easier. It is a lot easier to connect with a person if you speak their language. And last but not least, just as a fun fact, apparently if you switch from one language to the other, this is an excellent exercise for your brain. So it will keep your brain active and will maintain your brain health, which is great. Now, a fairly unfortunate story here that I would like to share. Patrick and Lisa were visiting Vienna, so they weren't, they hadn't decided if they moved, if they wanted to move to Vienna or not. But between the two of them, Lisa was the only one who spoke German. But Lisa, with a story of epileptic seizures, sadly had a seizure in a mall in Vienna. And while she was having the seizure, Patrick, who was experienced in these types of incidents, he knew exactly what Lisa needed. And the things that she, one of the things that she didn't need it, um, was to go to the hospital and he tried to explain to everyone around him there at the mall that they don't need to call an ambulance because lisa will be fine in a few minutes but nobody understood him so they did call the ambulance and lisa and patrick had to pay that day a lot of money for the transport to the hospital with the ambulance as well as well as for the um, for the, for the hospitalization. If Patrick would have known the language, it, this thing wouldn't have happened. So although this is a, let's say, a more tragic or unfortunate event or incident, it is still very, very important to at least be able to have a basic conversation in the language of the, country you're, go you're moving to. In our second master guide, The Important But Hidden, we go more into detail in this topic in our second chapter, Knowing the Language. Tip number 14, do not underestimate culture. Wherever you go, you are surrounded by culture. You are surrounded by culture on the streets, walking into a store, going on to a bus or connect when you interact with people at work everywhere culture is everywhere and this is something that is very close to my heart because i know that when i moved to vancouver one of the things that made my integration tougher was the fact that i didn't understand and i didn't know the culture i was applying the same principles that i was applying in my home country and they didn't work and I was let's say unsuccessful at creating relationships in the beginning because of that so knowing the culture teaches you how to be successful at bringing yourself forward building relationships relating to other people communicating teaches you what the best attitudes and behaviors are in order for you to have the results that you want in the new country. And now an interesting story about personal space and inviting people over. As I mentioned, when I came to Canada, I went to a course. I did a course at one of the famous universities here and at some point, we got a group work, a project work together with other people, together with, uh, with other colleagues of mine, other students. And the way that I was used 
from where I come from. I said, okay, let us meet on the weekend. You can come over to my place. I will make something for us. And then we will be able to, to work together and also have fun while we're doing this. And my suggestion was received with a lot of surprise because I hadn't seen um, my colleagues for too many times. We had seen each other just a few times. And for most of them, it was very surprising that without knowing each other, I was inviting them over. And then the second example is that after one of my yoga classes, a participant uh, came at the end, at the end, she came to me and she came very, very close, very, very close to my face. And then and there, I knew for sure that she was coming from a different culture, that she was coming from a different country. And I asked her, where are you from? And well, she was from the Czech Republic. And we started talking exactly about this, about the, um, the personal space and what is expected in different cultures. And she confirmed that she had been traveling for a year and that in different areas, in different cities, in different countries, she found it very, very different what is expected from this uh, personal space perspective. And she also had very different experience in how easy it was to connect with people and to make friends. So please be aware of culture and please make sure that you do know how the culture looks like before you move somewhere. And here I am very, very excited about these two resources. Maybe you've heard of them. So one of them is The Culture Bath by Erin Meyer. It's amazing. It's an amazing book. It revolutionized my world and I understood a lot better why things happen in different, why things happen differently in different um, parts of the world. And also Gerrit Hofstede's Cultural Dimensions. So have a look into those. If you don't have time or to look in depth in those, in the, the second master guide, The Important But Hidden, I've included um, a chapter who describes the main takeaways from those two wonderful resources. Tip number 15, find your favorite activities. Now I know that Work is very important. Family is very important. There are some absolutely essential things that we need to take care of. Nevertheless, it is important to find time for the activities that replenish us. Those extracurricular activities that we do for pleasure, for rejuvenation, for growth, contribution, or whatever other reason that helps us to get our energy back. Why I included this as a tip, you might find it either not very important or you might find it pretty obvious but a move is something that takes away a lot of energy there are a lot of mini or micro decisions that need to be made a lot of things that are new and this will deplete you of energy this is why it is important for you to give yourself credit for all the hard and all the new things and all the many things that you're doing and to allocate time for those specific activities that replenish you. And a, a second reason why this is important is because right now in your current context, in your current environment, you have some activities that you perform and that are available to you. And those are the things that replenish you. It might be that in the new context, in that new environment that you're moving to, that some of these activities are not more, are not available to you anymore. So you will need to replace them with something else. So ask yourself, what, what activities replenish you? And I just gave here some very specific examples. Tennis on clay, belly dancing, meeting your friends at the corner coffee shop, walking your dog Max in the forest, visiting grandma and eating the cookies she baked. So which ones are they for you? 
I would like to invite you to make a list of those replenishing activities that you won't be able to do after moving, but also to make a list of the activities you look forward in that new place you're moving to. In Moving Abroad, the Important But Hidden Master Guide, we have the fifth chapter, Finding Your Favorite Activities, that talks exactly about this in today. Tip number 16, invest in new relationships. Good relationships lead to a happier, healthier, and longer life. Countless studies have shown this. So this is why I would like to invite you, from the bottom of my heart, to invest time in new relationships, in building new relationships. Find the drive to match your vibe. How can you do this? You can join or come in contact with the community of the people who come from the same country you come from. You can find those people who have common interests with you, no matter what those interests are. It can be cooking, it can be knitting, it can be talking about science fiction books, whatever it is, you will find a group of people who has the same hobbies. The best place to look for that is meetup.com, meetup.com. You can join international organizations. For example, you can meet, you can join Rotary or Lions or Toastmasters, whatever it is for you. And of course, you can create new relationships by spending more time or getting to know your colleagues better, spending time with your neighbors or inviting them over or meeting friends of friends. So decide on three strategies to build your community. What works for you? What do you find the most attainable out of the things that I mentioned and maybe many other more possibilities. In the chapter, staying close to your family and friends, building a community and network, in our second master guide, we give you a lot of suggestions here. Tip number 17, invest in old relationships. Because as we said before, good relationships lead to a happier, healthier, and longer life. So the existing relationships are very, very important because especially at the beginning, when you are new in the country you're moving to, you will need a lot of emotional support. And the best way to get the support is from those people who care most about you, the people who love you, and the people who know you since you were a child. Those relationships are really, really priceless. So continue to make sure that you invest time, effort, energy in those relationships. The relationships with the parents and the grandparents, with the siblings, relatives, or friends, the partner or the children staying behind, because in some cases, just one of the parents moves abroad, even if it's just for six months or for a year, but it's important to be able to manage all the relationships in your life or the partner or children coming with you. This is also a very sensitive topic, and this is why I mention it here. The partner and the children coming with, the child or children coming with you, they will be going through the same challenges as you are. So you will need to make sure that you are there for them, that you are able to support them, and to make sure that you stay as a team. And this is something that we're going a lot into depth in the third master guide. So I'd like to, to invite you to write down the five most important relationships in your life and two strategies for each to make sure that you continue to nurture and keep those relationships alive. In the mental and the emotional, our third master guide, we have a long chapter dedicated to nurturing the relationships with the important people in your life. This is a priceless chapter that contains exact strategies of what to say and what to do in order to make sure that 
who take care of those relationships and of how those people feel. Tip number 18, expect an emotional roller coaster. You will experience a series of emotions both before you move and after you move. Why is this so important? From, in my opinion, and from my personal experience, but also from what I talked to other people moving abroad, is that we are all going through the same pattern of emotions. If we are prepared, and if we know what to expect, then we will be able to manage those emotions a little bit better. For example, before the move, at the beginning, you feel excitement and hope. When the idea of moving abroad comes to mind, it feels like it's going to solve all your existing problems. Then you start looking into it and start organizing things and you start feeling content about your progress. But at some point you will become overwhelmed because there are so many things to take care of when moving. Feel, and this overwhelm is followed by panic and fear. By panic and fear, you, will, you don't know if you are able to take care of everything and you also don't know if this is the right choice for you. And after these four stages, there are three more that you will experience before the move. When it comes to the feelings after the move, at first, you will feel excitement. It's also called the honeymoon phase. After you land in the new country, in the new city, you feel like a, a little child. Everything is exciting, everything is interesting, and everything brings you joy. But because there are so many new things that you need to take care of, you're going to be tired, fatigued, and maybe frustrated. Once you learn more and more about the new place, you gain more confidence in your success. But at some point, when things start falling into place, emotions, another type of emotion bubble, bubbles up. You become homesick. And I know this is a very harsh word, but some people do feel grief for all the things that they've lost through the move, the things that they had to leave behind. And a lot of us, a lot of us feel guilt for the people that we left behind. There are four more stages after these. But I would like to invite you first to write down which emotional stage surprised you the most and think of one way you could, could deal with it. In order for you, if you want to find out what the other emotional stages are, please visit our blog on mymoveguide.com slash blog. We have uh, two wonderful articles on the emotional stages and how to deal with them before, respectively, after the move. I'm going to send you the links to those ones as well. And last but not least, tip number 20, be excited. Congratulations, first of all, for deciding to move. Congratulations for watching this video or this webinar up to this point. You already know more than 90% of the people moving abroad, I promise, and this is exciting. Moving abroad is one of the toughest, but also one of the most enriching experiences you have in your life. You are going to become, uh, to, to grow as a person tremendously. And I would like to sincerely congratulate you for your courage and for doing that for yourself. Now, let us look at all the aspects that are important and that need to be looked into for a move. What is a must in order for the move to happen? You need to decide on a location. You need to calculate the cost of living and then to put together a budget. You need to find a job and a place to live. You need to identify the education institutions, the best bank for you, and to sign for an insurance. And the list goes on. 
What is important for the quality of your life? It's important to understand the culture, to speak the language, to know if the climate, the landscape, the hobbies, the food, if those, if you like those, if this is something that you get accustomed to. What about the transport and the services? Those are important too. And last but not least, what is precious to the mind and the heart? First of all, decide on your why. Why do you want to move? Have a vision of yourself in the new country. Understand your needs as well as your family's needs and how to satisfy them. Understand that you are going to go through an emotional roller coaster and know how to deal with it. Set up your systems and your habits to make your life, to optimize your life and to make it easier. Invest in your relationship. Most of all, invest in the relationship to yourself and be aware of the risks and be prepared to deal with them. All these aspects and many more we've covered in the three master guides. The essentials, the important but hidden, the mental and emotional. You'll be able to find all three of them on amazon.com. So you can either click on the link that I'm going to send you, or you can search on Amazon by Diana Firkan, and these master guides will appear. So again, if you were interested in the master guides, you will find the Kindle version on amazon.com. The first master guide, The Essentials, also has a paperback version, which, is, which has a great design made one of, my, one, of, one of my friends. She's very, very talented. Now, another thing that we've prepared for you are those free resources that I talked about. On, if you go to mymookguide.com slash free, you will find a downloadable free, lug, free first luggage checklist, a free step-by-step -step move plan with checklists, and we are now also working on the moving budget template. Additionally, we've, we are constantly creating free video tutorials for you to access for different, uh, to cover different aspects of the move, one, the, the aspects that we've talked about before. So for that, you can access our YouTube channel. We are constantly working on updating it with new and practical videos for you. I'm going to send you the links for that as well. Thank you very, very much for joining today. If you would like to come in contact with me, please send an email to diana at mymoveguide.com or you can also contact me on LinkedIn. If you have any questions, I would love to hear from you. Also, if you have a pressing issue or something that you don't know how to deal with regarding your move, whether it's before you moved, it's during your move or after your move, I would love to hear about that as well. I'm sure that I can share some resources with you with regards to that. Thank you very, very much for joining and keep in touch. Have a wonderful day, a wonderful afternoon or a good night.